Right, so we have a conversation with the majority leader of Ghana's parliament, Alexander Fenyo Mark, who's also the MP for a Futu in the Central Ridge. But before we get to that very important conversation, fresh documents filed in court by lawyer for Richard Jakwa, who is standing trial with a minority leader for causing financial loss to the state, is alleging gross prosecutorial abuse and abuse of court processes by the Attorney General. Richard Jakwa wants the charges against him to be struck out by the court and alleges that the AG told him that he was not guilty of the charges he had filed against him in court. The process also alleged that the AG brought the criminal case against him and the minority leader because of pressure from President Okufuado and then Finance Minister Ken of Oriata. My colleague, Koko Asante, who is a member of our Legal Affairs Dex, joins me via Zoom with details of this application filed by a lawyer for Richard Jakpa, uh, Tadio Sorry. And we've got, you know, uh, graphic... Uh, Pictorial uh, evidence of what we have put together. So, but I'm bringing Kwaku. Kwaku, so why this twist in this case and why the need for a mini trial? Is there justification in the processes that you have? Well, according to this in court on behalf of Richard Japa, the Attorney General has abused his prosecutorial powers under Article 88 of the Constitution, Article 296 that deals with the use of discretionary power. And they, they put all these two together and claim that because of this, their trial and the charges that have been filed against his client, Richard Japa, should be dropped because it just not disclosed a lot of evidence. Referring to this document, they are calling for striking out of all the charges and accordingly terminating the proceedings against Richard Japa. The, 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 the specifics of the law that they rely on mainly the, uh, the Article 23 and 296 of the 1992 Constitution that deals with discretionary power. The Attorney General has a lot of discretion in terms of who he presses criminal charges against. And the case that Tadio Sorry is making is that the present charges just does not cut it because the Attorney General knew right from the outset that his client, Richard Japa, was indeed not guilty. And that, in fact, the Attorney General, on several occasions having met Richard Japa, did disclose to him that he was not guilty and that he was only charging him together with the minority leader and the then Amanima, who used to be the chief director of the finance ministry because mm. they wanted to conceal the real target of that criminal suit, which is Dr. Kisela Tufosin. So, Elton, in talking of the law, mm. they cited particularly Article 23 and Article 296 of the Constitution, and that is the basis, the legs on which Tadu Sorry has filed this application on behalf of Richard Jakpa at the High Court. Right, so, so there are some claims that they are, they are making in this race. One is the allegation that the Attorney General got favorable at that in, in whatever form we don't know yet, unless there's evidence backing this, this, this rate, that there had been some kind of uh, behind the scenes conversation where Richard Japa is claiming that he was told by the AG that he was not the subject or the main focus of the, of the prosecution, that at eventually he was going to be let go. Uh, beyond this written submission that is contained in, the, in, in this rate, do they provide evidence back in this? Well, we understand that Richard Japan and his lawyers want to keep a little bit of their cards close to their chest. In fact, apart from the recording that the NDC have put out, we understand Richard Japan and his lawyers claim they may have some more evidence that will implicate the Attorney General and make the point that the Attorney General is engaged in alleged gross prosecutorial misconduct. Mm. So. According to Richard Jakpa, in these affidavits that he has deposed to and sworn to the, the, the High Court, in 2022, he did meet the Attorney General. He did explain to the Attorney General the processes that led to him being involved in the deal to supply the ambulances. Mm. And that the Attorney General did explain to him that he was not a target of this and that he should present to him some documents. He should, it, it, it should, be, should be making a case that will implicate a minority leader and ultimately he will be let go because he is not the real reason why the state is in court. Mm. He does again go on to allege in this process that Attorney General took some documents from him and told him that when it is time for the state to close his case, he, Richard Jaffa, can file a, a submission of no case and that he, the Attorney General, will not be opposed to the submission of no case mm. in respect of him. But that indeed, despite these promises and assurances made by the Attorney General, when he did file a submission of no case, the Attorney General challenged it and the court actually backed that position and said that Richard Japa has, um, uh, has a question to answer. So he puts out this claim that the Attorney General did tell him 
that because of some pressure that the president and the then finance minister, Ken Furiata, mm. were bringing to bear on him following Kesel Atoforsen's unrelenting opposition to the 2022 budget and the e-levy, they needed to bring some charges against him. These are all allegations right. that are made in the process that have been filed in court. Yeah, so, so uh, we've lost the question today. We'll try and see if we can get to that. So, Few issues we need, few issues that we need to cross. Kogu, uh, uh, are, are you able to hear me? Right. So, Kogu Santi cannot hear us. We'll try and see if we can re-establish communication with him on this very important matter. We, what we don't know, is whether the the, the Attorney General's office has been served with this latest development on this case, and whether or not uh, the AG's office want to react and then file. Yeah, but what they are seeking is a mini trial, if you like, as the substantive case is ongoing. They brought these new, uh, you know, uh, revelations, uh, these new revelations, so that uh, they they can have this matter ahead ahead while the substantive case is also being dealt with. Kwaku, can you hear me? We lost you briefly. All right, so, so, so we've put together a sequence of events leading up to this day, and we're going to have that on your screen very shortly so that you can appreciate the, the, the situation or the, this running uh, controversy in the court. And the objective of the motion uh, that a third accused has filed is, is seeking the court to strike out the charges and accordingly terminate the proceedings against the third accused or, or the applicants. Alternatively, a stay of the proceedings before the court against the third accused. The third accused in this case is Richard Akra or the applicant. And this is the latest, uh, you know, decision that they have taken in this particular one. The Attorney General, at whose instance the third accused or applicant is being prosecuted in the instance suit, has brought the charges and instituted the proceedings uh, in abuse of the process of the court. That is, that is the claim. And contrary to his constitutional obligations and Article 23 and 296 of the 1992 Constitution, based on this, he's in court seeking some, you know, uh, reliefs and some pronouncement from the court on this uh, matter. And so uh, we are following up on this matter. We'll bring you us and when we have development on this particular issue. Remember also that we have a conversation with the uh, majority leader in Ghana's parliament and amongst other, we are try we'll try and seek his, his opinion on this matter because he's a lawyer. And of course, uh, uh, this is a raging matter in the country. But away from that, the Soya Bean Value Chain Association of Ghana, Food Sovereignty Ghana, they are also in the news. And remember, this matter has been in court for some time now. Peasant farmers and other stakeholders are demanding the halt of genetically modified or modernized organism in the soya bean production. This follows the collapse of a nine-year legal battle led by civil society organizations, uh, full sovereignty Ghana, to hold the introduction of GMOs in Ghana. Now, when it comes to GMO, there are giants in GMO. The US, Brazil, Argentina have all gone GMO. And then it is countries like Ghana and a few of us who have remained organic. And we know that when you go to the international market, organic products value better than the GMOs. And if people are coming to Ghana to buy soya beans, it is only because we have remained organic. That is a niche market. And we would not want to lose that because then if we go GMO, we'll be swallowed up in the market. Who should come to Ghana when Brazil, Argentina, US is doing GMO? What, what will be of our use? And so if the Ghanaian soya beans value chain is striving, it is striving on the basis that it is non-GMO, Please, we are entreating the government of Ghana. We are entreating the Ministry of Agriculture. We are entreating uh, the National Biosafety Authority. According to the association and stakeholders, the patronage of soya bean in Ghana thrives because it is organic and rather than go GMO. Government should rather focus on putting the right measures in place for production of organic soya bean to thrive. Look at giving us uh, pre land preparation. It's a huge challenge because then if we want to go to preparing a virgin land for production, it's expensive. Look at irrigation so that the farmers in the north can do f uh, two farming seasons a year. Is that right? Give them access 
to finance so that they can, uh, how do you call it, access mechanization services and inputs and then provide machinery for mechanization. It's simple. These things are the needs of the value chain. It has nothing to do with GMO. It has nothing to do with GMO. Right, so this is the pause here on Joy News with me, Elton Brobe. And this Friday, we've got a very compelling conversation with the majority leader of Ghana's parliament. Let me, let me lay the foundation here. The majority caucus in parliament this week accused the minority caucus of attempting to sabotage Ghana's economic growth through their persistent opposition to some tax waivers currently under consideration by the House. There are almost $400 million worth of tax waivers requests that have been pending at the Finance Committee for over three years, some going into four years, entangled in a political stalemate. However, the NDC, they vowed to block these requests at every turn. Now, speaking to journalists in Parliament uh, yesterday, the Majority Leader, Alexander Fenyamakin, said the NDC were being hypocritical. He asserted that the NDC government, led by the former President John Mahama, had granted uh, MPs or put before Parliament more than $800 million in tax waivers during his tenure. But is this the right way to go? This afternoon, the majority leader joins me as we explore this subject plus other issues in Parliament. Honorable, you're welcome. Thank you. Everyone. Right, so, I mean, <laughs> yes, of course, always good to see you. Uh, to take on your, your, your colleagues in a manner that you did, accusing them of sabotaging the economic development of the country because they've taken a legitimate position against these proposed tax waivers. First of all, why is it even necessary to grant companies waivers, companies that are, that, that are in this country to work, make profit, most time, you know, uh, take the profit out of the country? And yet we provide some kind of a foundation to allow, to allow them to thrive. For those who are watching probably may not appreciate what these tax waivers are meant to do. How do we explain this to a six-year-old that we need to give incentive to a company that, is, that has come here to work, make profit, and then take the money to their host countries. Thank you, Alton, for the opportunity to further deal with this uh, all-important matter. So to any toddler who would ask this question, why grant tax waiver? First of all, taxation comes at a cost to any entity that's involved in investment. So if the company is looking for a place to invest, that company has many options. Various countries are in competition to, for foreign direct investment and other opportunities. Right. Ghana is not the only country in the world. There are several countries that have different laws to attract investment. Right. So normally, these are used as bait. Such policy on tax waivers are bait mm -hmm. to attract investment so that the company knows that, okay, if I go to country A, mm -hmm. I would have all my capital to invest in my production. Through that, there is, the company is able to cut down on costs. Because if you are investing at a low cost, mm -hmm. you are able, able to also sell at a very low cost. Right. You are able to expand because the opportunity is there for you to expand using the same capital. You are able to employ more. Through expansion, you're able to employ more. Mm -hmm. So if somebody is bringing $1 million to Ghana, mm -hmm. and in bringing $1 million, he would end up paying $500,000 in tax right. alone. Mm -hmm. That person would choose another country where he would have to spend 100000 in taxation. Mm -hmm. That uh, 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 900000 dollars would be available to that company to expand, to aid production, mm -hmm. and to employ more. Now, if your, 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 your tax policy is also very punitive or very unattractive, locally, people will prefer to invest in other countries. financial instruments. No, I'm looking even at right. locally. Okay. When people make money 
as Ghanaians. Mm -hmm. And they are looking at the opportunities. They will prefer that, okay, if I would have to pay so much tax, if importing raw materials or machinery for my business will cost me so much, mm -hmm. why not invest the money in treasure bills? Right. This is something that this government wants to discourage. Mm -hmm. It is the reason why during the campaign, Mr. President said upon assumption of office, he is going to introduce what we call one district, one factory. The essence of it is to create a new space, an enabling environment for businesses to thrive, okay. to encourage indigenous businesses, and also to attract foreign investment. Mm -hmm. Now, in doing this, this government was mindful of the fact that there are other countries that were also selling their country and pushing for investment. Mm -hmm. So one way was to say that, look, if you come to Ghana, the equipment, the machinery, the raw materials that you'll be bringing to set up Your or to use for expansion, you are going to have a tax waiver. We are going to waive taxes on it. Now, Ed, uh, but, then, but then you have to qualify another one, one district, one, one district, one factory. I'm coming to that. Point. Okay. Alton, the NDC is creating an impression as though government just got up and brought a list for parliament to approve. No. Mm -hmm. In fact, you, for a company to benefit, there's a desk at the trade ministry where you would have to meet some pre qualification mm -hmm. criteria. They, they, they do a very rigorous interrogation of your, your, your whole investment plan mm -hmm. before they escalate it to the Ministry of Finance. Right. So it's not just that people get in and their money is being dashed out to people. No. There are conditions. The, there are conditions. That must be met. You must meet them. First from the Trade Ministry Trade Ministry to the finance. before it gets to finance. Mm -hmm. Before it comes to Parliament. We have a whole desk. So you go through all that. Then eventually it gets to Parliament. Now, my worry is, our friends are playing politics with it. Mm -hmm. Okay, under our 1D1F initiative, it is not a tax waiver granted the entity forever. If you look at the policy, government says that you benefit for five years mm -hmm. into operation. After five years, you would have to apply again. All right, so you don't benefit forever. Mm. You are not being given tax waiver on your profit. Right. This whole thing is about your imp the, 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 the raw material, the, raw material, I mean, I mean, the equipment, the machinery mm -hmm. that you bring in. No. Out in yesterday. And then, and then after five years, you go for a review or what? You have to apply because the, the dispensation is for five years mm -hmm. of operation. Mm -hmm. Now, yesterday, I wanted Ghanaians to know the hypocritical posture of the NDC on two fronts. On two fronts. Mm. One, the fact that with all the 42 companies whose applications are pending before parliament, the total amount, the value of the 42 the value, company, the request, exactly, $400 million, is now down to $350 million. After what? After some review? Yes, there were some reviews. Mm -hmm. There were some reviews. Whereas if you look at the a single entity, MPS, you recall. MPS, somewhere at, at 20, the Tema port. Meridian Port Service. Right. Somewhere 2014, this company approached Ghana and government of Ghana under uh, President Mahama, you know, approved their proposal to undertake the port expansion. Mm. Now, let me read out specifics to you to let you, to expose the NDC hypocrisy. This company invested $1.5 billion dollars in that port expansion mm -hmm. project. Now, they brought a $950 million plus, 908, let me quote the exact amount. The application that was brought by uh, Honorable Atu Fossen and Honorable uh, Monacote, mm -hmm. these deputy ministers, they were deputy doing, finance minister, the yeah. deputy finance minister, Dr. Fossen, the minority leader right. of today. Mm -hmm. He was a deputy finance minister. He and Madame Monacote. Monacote, they brought the application to Parliament. Mm -hmm. They brought an application of 982 million CD tax waiver. Mm -hmm. Okay? Eventually, Parliament approved 832 million. I am not criticizing the decision 
to grant tax waiver. I am rather because they qualified at the time. Of course, I am exposing their double standard, their double talk, and their hypocrisy. Now, let me read something more to you. Specifically, what this means mm -hmm. is that for every one dollar that MPS invested, mm -hmm. we granted them almost 55 cents in tax waiver. More than half of, right. of one dollar. Right. Now, apart from that, listen to this. The company was also granted an exemption. It was exempt from corporate tax for 10 years and a reduced corporate tax of 15% over another 10 years for an additional five years. And again, finally, they were excluded from paying taxes on dividend to shareholders for 20 years. Listen. For 20 years. 20 years. Meaning it's, it is still, it's, this contract is still in session. They started somewhere 2016. Exactly. Now, after you've given them waiver on importation of the equipment, raw materials, whatever, you are again saying that the profit that they make, the dividends, they are first of all, they are not even paying tax on profits. Right. You again said that they are, the, the shareholders would also not pay tax mm -hmm. on dividends. I'm saying that the rationale behind it was to encourage investors. Investors. And we agreed, of course. MPP is a. Uh, 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 entity. Mm -hmm. We believe in businesses. We believe that you don't do imposition of tax to encourage. Uh, enterprises to grow, mm -hmm. you need to give them the space. So even in opposition, we were okay with it. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Right. Now, apart from that, yesterday I talked about some illegality. Apart from this, 2015 and 2016, President Mahama himself, through executive approval, granted certain companies tax waivers. It didn't come to parliament. It didn't come now. Come to parliament. Now, let me explain. Granting executive approval is not illegal. But same being implemented without parliamentary approval is illegal, unconstitutional, and immoral. And in this case, what happened? Now, let me read the constitution to you. Article 1742, it provides, quote, where an act enacted in accordance with clause 1 of this article confers power on any person or authority to waive or vary a tax imposed by that act. The exercise of the power of waiver or variation in favor of any personal authority mm -hmm. shall be subject to the prior approval of parliament by resolution. Now, these are the companies right. that benefited under what the then government referred to as strategic investment. And, and this, under, under, under the president, under the NDC, executive approval, executive approval, they said that strategic investors will benefit from it. Mm -hmm. The criteria for determining strategic investment uh, was a policy mm -hmm. that they enacted. And I have no problem with it. Mm -hmm. Now, in 20, 29th April 2015, the Secretary to President, Kwesi Korte, wrote this letter to G, uh, GIPC Chief Executive. And in the letter, these were the companies that were granted tax waivers. Gasset. Dream Reality Limited, Garden City Mall Limited, Boston Investment Limited, ShopRite Ghana Limited, um, Cement de la Afrique Ghana Limited, Vincent Sugar Refinery Ghana Limited, mm -hmm. Jata Cement Ghana Limited, Jata Cement. Belonging to the brother of. No, no, I'm not going into I don't want to personalize. I'm an entrepreneur. I want to be fair to the issue. We are dealing with entities that have benefited. Ecobank Ghana Limited. Dream Reality Ghana Limited. Now, for me, Edwin, uh, Edson, for me... That, that, does this communication provide justification for well, the task waiver? Because these yeah, are very, very, were, very renowned and, right. and you know, so, very no, wealthy companies, if you like. You know what? I want to manage my submission okay. by not even criticizing it. I'm not, I'm not there yet. I'm not going into whether they were justified or not. For me, I want to believe that government acted in good faith. Mm -hmm. To the extent that the letter read, quote, uh, stated, thus, this is to inform you that on the recommendations of the Ministry of Finance, I hold that to be true and to have been done in good faith, His Excellency the President, President Mahama, mm -hmm. has approved the recognition of the undermentioned 10 companies as strategic investors. All right? So for me, 
if in the 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 view of the uh, 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 of the, of the, the president of the government at the time they were strategic these, enough to be given this they were making strategic investments so they needed to be given that tax waiver so be it come to to january 2016 this was another correspondence by Kwesi Korte, secretary to president he granted the following companies tax waivers woma africa limited west hills mall tank palace hotel limited mm. Mabani Seven Company and others, Sunon Asogli Power Limited, Quantum Power Ghana Gas Limited. Again, these companies benefited. I'm saying that these did not even come to Parliament, mm -hmm. but GIPC was directed to grant them tax waivers. Now, I say they are unconstitutional because if you read the Constitution, although GIPC has the power to grant that waiver that is why i say power enacted uh, enactment that authorizes uh, an entity with regards to imposition of tax waiver uh, variation and all that mm. must be subjected must be subjected to prior parliamentary approval and this was not done this was not done mm. but i'm saying that we have not even gone there and nobody raised it I want, right no, no i'm not i'm saying that let's let for the sake of argument say that they invoked the necessity rule mm -hmm. to say that, look, they want to promote enterprise. They want to promote entrepreneurship. They want to help Ghanaian entities. Mm -hmm. And of course, these are companies we know. For instance, the Jata Cement you were referring right. to, belonging to Mr. Mohammed's brother. We all know the company is functioning. It has employed Ghanaians. I will be the last to criticize the grant of exemption to Jata Cement. Mm. I repeat, I will be the last. It will be unpatriotic on my part to criticize the grant of exemption to Jata Cement because at least my two eyes can see what is that, that the doing? company is has brought mm -hmm. in equipment, it's manufacturing cement, it has employed Ghanaians, etc. etc. Question is if you, as an NDC party, mm -hmm. as a government, you believed in promoting enterprise, you believe that when you grant tax waiver, it will aid economic growth. And Fifth equity, the secretary, uh, the, the general, general secretary, general of, secretary NDC. of NDC, then transport minister on the floor of the house, argue that look, in granting tax waiver, we should not look at the revenue losses, so called, mm -hmm. but we should look at the potential for economic growth. My question is, why is it that today, you as a party in opposition, mm -hmm. will stampede government on in, in a fine policy? Allow me to come in. That so and my worry is that the minority leader mm -hmm. who led government in parliament mm -hmm. to ask to for these waivers. Mm -hmm. No, no, these ones did not this come one to This one executive approval. Come to parliament, mm -hmm. quite a number of them. I'm just citing these few. Mm. You are high, loud in your voice for straightening government. Now, look at NPS alone. Meridian uh, uh, port, services. port services. NPS alone. One company, $832 million. Apart from that, I've given you that even shareholders are giving ta uh, uh, tax waiver on their profit, on their dividend for 20 years. Mm. I don't think that any of these 42 companies All right. All right. So, has that privilege. All right. So, so, so I'm so, saying that why, mm -hmm. why frustrate why, government? Is it I'll, because I'll, you are in opposition? Okay. So allow me to come in. So these 42 companies... I mean, running up a little over 800, a little over 350 million dollars. You can compare okay, I get it. that to a single entity. Okay, so for those who want to simplify it, especially from the minority side of parliament, and they make the point that, I mean, you are, you are before the IMF asking for some relief to put your economy in order. The, the tranche we are even expecting is around 360 million dollars. So they simplify it to say that you are expecting the IMF to give you $360 million to help manage your economy. Yet you are giving away $300 and the same amount of money for free. That's how they simplify it. If this tax waiver is not granted these companies, how disadvantaged will Ghana be in terms of attracting direct foreign investment? Because I understand that some have been pending for five to six years. Some, because of, because, some have put on hold their expansion drive 
employment and all those issues. If this grant is not undertaken, how injurious will this be to the economy of this country? One, those who find the situation unacceptable will move to another country. Is it already um, happening? Pardon? Is yes, it? it's already happening. I would have to would have to move because one of the things that attracted them here was because they were going to get that waiver. Mm -hmm. Two, their production cost is going to increase and they are going to also put it on their pricing because if you are paying for everything and your cost is high, the consumer would, would, would have to pay. Three, it will mean that those who are going to stay, they are going to spend more chasing dollars mm -hmm. to import raw materials and equipment. So that would affect your local city. Right. All right? Mm -hmm. Four, they will be slow. There will be a slow pace in expansion. Because it's already, you are running a business and your cost of production is high. You are always looking at cost. You don't think about pr production. Mm -hmm. You don't think about expansion. So you are going to limit yourself. And then rather plow back the little profit and invest in another country. Finally, employment will not increase at the pace that is expected. Mm -hmm. Because if you are not increasing production, you start with 50 workforce. You are not likely within a period to increase the number of employment. Meanwhile, you have a chunk of the youth graduating from schools. Mm -hmm. So I am saying that they are oversimplifying it, as you said, and it is merely for the politics of it. Why do you justify the need for tax waiver to aid the economic growth? whilst in government. But when you get into opposition, you condemn it. But, but again, I mean, there's a law that you've passed that is regulating this. And these applications, they've gone through the process. They've, they've gone from the Ministry of Trade to Finance, and then to Parliament, referred to the Finance Committee. The Finance Committee sat on, on a number of times. There is still disagreement to the extent that when, when, when you met uh, for that emergency system, at the tail end of it, the committee had issues. And according well, to... I, I think, and uh, I, I got up and said, a committee of parliament cannot stampede parliament. Yes. Yes, the constitution allows parliament to work through committees. Mm -hmm. But when it is obvious that a committee of parliament is frustrating the work of parliament, plenary can take it up and then work towards that. Mr. Speaker ruled, giving the committee another opportunity that will resume. Mm -hmm. When we resume, he expects the committee will be done with its work, table its report, I mean, uh, 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 table the report mm -hmm. for us to consider. We cannot continue to frustrate the private sector. The NDC minority sees itself as a government in waiting, sees itself as a so-called responsible opposition. I want them to be responsible enough. The approach they are taking will not aid economic growth. Mm -hmm. The approach they are taking is unpatriotic. If it was good yesterday to aid investment, somebody asked me that, ah, why even Ecobank? Why Tank Palace? Why Gassem? Because, for instance, why Gassem? Yeah. I, didn't, I, I don't want to criticize the concept of strategic investor. But, Alton, if somebody is going to build a hotel in Winneba, a five-star hotel in Winneba, and you term it strategic investment, mm -hmm. Any reasonable man on the street would agree. Mm -hmm. But in the heart of Accra, where we have many five-star hotels, and a company is building a hotel at a Roman Ridge, right opposite Roman Ridge is a, 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 that M Plaza, right. that big hotel. Right. I'm saying that if you term it a strategic investment and you've given tax waiver, so be it. Mm -hmm. However, don't turn around and criticize new companies that are coming up within the, in the central region. One major uh, uh, company that is coming up is the, the uh, Triton Oak uh, Tissue Factory. Yes. Between my constituency and uh, Agun, uh, Gomua uh, uh, East in the central region. Mm -hmm. This company is going to produce the raw material base for all the tissue companies. Mm. So if we are able to successfully see through this company mm -hmm. which got attracted to Ghana by our 1D1 right. What that means is that all the tissue companies are not going to import their jumbo. It will be produced here. In Ghana. So the pressure on our city we'll would come down. down.
we are going to employ more people that enkle the Winneba, Pomazi, Suedro, Asebu, Ekunfi, that entire enkle mm -hmm. will become active. The value chain would allow people to get the space to trade and get employed. But again, I but, mean, but, I mean, but, but okay. a thing like this, mm -hmm. frustrating an investor, would the investor stay or go away? Look at uh, Century. They are also refining oil. That oil refinery. If you have a company investing so much in oil refinery, we've been talking about it. But again, if... if, if oil refinery has been there. Because we brought in Centio. Yes, because we brought in Centio. I mean... Final pro, uh, finished mm -hmm. product. And we've gotten a company refining oil here. And you hear the minority criticizing, attacking that. Why grant them... Uh, but uh, honorable, if, if, if I may come in, if I may come in, in because we brought in Centio and the concern that has come from the minority side, the claim is that when they met, when, when they met to scrutinize the documents, the waiver applications before them, Centio, for example, after going through the, 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 the documentation that the, the minister presented, I mean, it came to that they had to whistle down the, the, the request agree, to over hundred million dollars, and same applied to a lot of so, them. It means maybe not not, not a lot of work was done uh, before uh, the referral was was put before the finance committee. Elton, I'm a parliamentarian. Mm -hmm. My job is to scrutinize. All I'm saying is that minority scrutinize, but don't obstruct. Why? I am. All my submissions are grounded on good faith. Mm -hmm. Look. I have said, and I didn't run away from it. I'm not here doing politics. I'm here to address a national issue in an open-minded state that people will respect the views I'm expressing. In our time, I'm, I've just said mm -hmm. that when they brought MPS, it was 982 million. Mm -hmm. We scaled it down. The minority, led by the late Akutose and my good brother, Isebe mm -hmm. their scrutiny on the finance committee brought it down to 832 million and i'm saying that i commend them for the scrutiny which led to a reduction in the central term mm -hmm. i agree mm -hmm. but don't stampede and say zero and no no look at it scrutinize and if there's a need to call for additional document mm -hmm. you call for it but you cannot say you are keeping a document for one year two years three years that is all I said. You have members on the you have members on the committee. The, the other, the other allegation. Go into the listen. No, the point is they try to bring they, they say our finance committee chair publicly. Kwaku Kaatsen has made his position clear see, on this matter. We are talking the, about the, the member of parliament for Tamil West, uh, Carlos Ahenkra. He's taking him on the floor. Katie, I'm on the no, same, saying that Kwaku Kaatsen is also frustrating Elton, the work of the committee. The chairman of the committee Elton, appears to have a position Elton, against Elton, the task waivers. Elton, I have not heard certain things. I don't want to trivialize issues. It is government's policy to have this. Mm -hmm. Government's intention is to aid economic growth through such an incentive. I am saying that the grandstanding by the minority is unacceptable. Let's deal with it. Mr. Speaker has directed that the committee should meet. I am appealing to them that they should support government to get this done. Mm -hmm. In their time, they even granted tax waivers. We did not come to parliament mm -hmm. because they felt that these companies must benefit from the 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 the, the that uh, 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 incentive mm -hmm. for good reasons, and we have cited some of the companies today. We can see Tan Palace working. All right, mm -hmm. if they are not gotten this, perhaps if they are charging hundred dollars a night per room, they will be charging one fifty. Mm -hmm. Today we have Jata Cement function. I don't want to trivialize it by saying. Former President Mohammed's brother and blah blah. Those are trivial things. Mm -hmm. No, they are unnecessary. We are seeing that the company is in existence. It's as employed. Other companies, ShopRite is right here. Right. We can see ShopRite. Mm -hmm. Perhaps if they were not granted this waiver, things would have been expensive, correct? Mm. The cost of rental would have been higher. I support it because I'm an entrepreneur. I know. I'm a private sector mm. person. So I support anything that would help. But I also know. That a lot of my friends I speak to in the private sector, I tell them that Martin, if you guys are not helping us, we we'll invest in treasury bills. We we'll invest in some instruments where we know that okay, at the end of every quarter, at the end of every month, we will get our money back, because we relied on your private sector drive mm -hmm. to support your initiative to bring our investment. 
we shouldn't get people stuck. So is the committee still refusing to meet, even as even as the speaker directed that no, during this break I, they should have this I, meeting, I, they should I work am, on this, I and then am, when you come back, making, perhaps am, you can you no, can debate it, I am it and consider an it. I appeal to my colleagues in the minority. It is the NDC's attack on government that I'm dealing with. As to issue of committee meeting, every committee has its leadership. I trust that they would carry through what is expected of them. But I'm saying that the NDC shouldn't take a posture that that is unacceptable. I am saying that even a single entity and in their time had in excess of 832 million. We are talking about 42 companies benefiting from a tax incentive of less than 400 million. Mm -hmm. So you have no basis to attack unless merely because of politics you want to frustrate privacy. But, but what, about, what about your side? The committee is made up of at least I, I don't, as far as I, I, I know, don't think 25 that, members of the, co the committee. I don't think that we have an issue. You don't have an issue. I so the sabotage is clearly coming from the NDC I don't side. think that we have an issue. In the absence of them, can the committee still sit? Well, if we have to get to that break, can the, we'll can the report be put together, I'm, even if it is not... I am a, saying that, so, you see, first make the appeal. I'm reaching out to them. From yesterday, it's been an appeal, appeal, appeal. Mm -hmm. Because it's getting out of hand. All right? So... Because I you're am, under pressure from the business community? The state of the economy... We don't have to create certain impression. We need, to, we need to get the private sector running elton has any graduate given you a cv to find him or oh, thousands, thousands of them right and all of them what's their target <laughs> in fact when you finish school you want to be employed by government exactly almost in my house in my office on my phone you get people selling you cv ghana gas gmpc cocoa board gra these are all state institutions are we promoting state institutions to employ idle hands or we want to promote private sector growth, which would create space for more employment. Mm -hmm. And that is what we'll get if we give them that incentive, allow the cost of production to be low. No, no, I understand high that. cost of production affects productivity. I understand. High cost of production mm -hmm. affects employment. High cost of production will lead to high cost of the product itself being produced. I understand that when that they, makes our economy unattractive. I do understand that when the leadership met the president, this was one of the president's proposals for you to work together to bring finality to these waivers. No, I am not going into specifics. We've had a meeting with His Excellency the President as leadership. We discuss general issues. I don't think that it's appropriate to narrow down on a particular matter. Mm. We discuss how we could work together with the executive to ensure that, you know, uh, executive functions well and parliament also doesn't stampede the executive. After all, it is one Ghana. So I don't want to go into fine details of what has been discussed. Mm. It, it will be inappropriate. But again, uh, how do you respond to other voices on the streets that says that we are heading towards an election, we are just some six months away from the election, government is seeking to grant these waivers to these companies. I mean, the application did not come today. It didn't come no, today. The application did not. But come the benefits today. will happen today if no, the approval no, goes through. So when and the then they say come. that we are in an election year, what is the guarantee that there is not kind of a gentleman agreement behind the scenes where people oh, benefit and duly? Oh, come on. These are these are no, also voices no, on no, the streets no, no, that no, demands no, you know, with some great, clarity. With the greatest respect to said voices, how how do I gain personally from a company that is bringing equipment, raw materials? to undertake its production. Isn't it the ordinary Ghanaian who is going to gain through employment? Are we happy with the state of these companies where they are stuck? They don't know where to turn to. Some of them have been compelled to pay mm. at the ports. Okay? Mm. Some of them have been compelled to pay and then they will pass on the cost to consumers. Is that what we want? And turn around and do politics. See, Alton, there's a limit to everything one does. Mm -hmm. You are a politician. Do the politics, but there's a limit to it. Don't do that extremist politics of convenience where you think that because it is not your government, you must shut everything down. That's not patriotism. All right. Alexander Femi is my guest here on the pause here on Joy News. We are discussing 
matters in Parliament, the controversial tax waiver application that has been pending before the House for years, for some of the companies five, for some of them six years, for some four, for some three. And the minority, they've taken a, a tough position on this matter. They have always rejected the, the consideration of this on the floor. At the last you know, uh, uh, sitting, the Speaker directed that more work should be done on it. So what is going to happen when the House resumes on the term? So are you still trying to reach out to your colleagues to soften their stand? They appear to have the backing of the flag bearer of the NDC who says that it is not the way to go. I do understand that before we went, to, the IMF had concerns with tax waivers and that we have to go to Parliament to have a new law to regulate it. So it, the, the assumption is that whatever is before the House satisfy whatever of the course. entire plenary approved. And so there shouldn't be a concern. That is why, that, that, <laughs> yes. that is the hypocrisy, that is the hypocrisy I keep talking about. Mm -hmm. Why would the flag bearer of the NDC, His Excellency, former President, uh, John Dramani Mahama, kick against tax waiver when he himself introduced a policy called strategic investor. When he himself, with the greatest respect, found, uh, found it necessary to grant tax waivers and same did not even come to parliament. Why would he say so? It would be for politics. In any event, this is the first time in the history of our democracy that a tax incentive is being regulated. The first time that parliament has passed a law, a regulation, a policy, a guideline, where every box would have to be ticked. Mm -hmm. In the past, there was no such thing. So that in itself should tell you that Parliament has created a room for accountability. Elton, there was nothing like freebies under here in this. It's not the case that when you are granted the exemption, it is forever. Mm -hmm. You close your books and you go. Parliament has part of its oversight. At any point can invite the ministry to give account how this was implemented. And that is our bona fide. Mm -hmm. Why would, no one, would, they, would we not want to utilize that? Take advantage of that. Look at it, scrutinize, approve it quarterly or every six months or semi-annually. Mm -hmm. Come back, tell the minister, we approved it on the following conditions. Semi-annually or quarterly, we want report on how the, if they are going according the, to our parliament, the, the, the approval is being mm -hmm. implemented, what equipment are br being brought in, how many raw materials are being br brought in, what, what are the values and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, Elton, you remember... Not long ago, our pharmaceutical companies were competing with a lot of uh, imported drugs. Mm -hmm. When we gave them the space, are they not expanding? During uh, Minister Alan Chamantin's time, this, uh, some 32 drugs yeah. okay, were, were limited. Government plays limitation on them in terms of the importation that these 32 drugs cannot be imported because we want to aid local production. Okay? Today, one of the companies that is suffering is the B5, which is supposed In to Tema, produce uh, uh, sanitary parts. Exactly. Now we import sanitary parts. It costs us so much. Now this company has the capaci capacity to produce sanitary parts. If we give them the space, if we give them that incentive, mm -hmm. the raw materials that will come, will be cheaper. They will produce locally and will buy it cheaper. As compared to letting them pay tax on it, on the raw materials, and then they, you know, uh, passing on the cost to our women. Is that right? I, 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 so are you, should, are you confident we should, that... We should I... explain, we should... Uh, the NDC would have to understand it in these real terms mm -hmm. than to look at the convenience of the politics... They are, they are, they are. But and, and is, it, is it ever going to change? Because you've been, you've been, you've been, you've been convincing, you've been appealing well, to them, you've been all like, manner of like, things. Well, today <laughs> we've, 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 we've laid the facts bare. Right. We have demonstrated that all they're doing is being done in bad faith. Mm -hmm. They are doing all of this in bad faith. They granted an, a single entity, mm -hmm. 832. Mm -hmm. It doesn't come anywhere near. What we are doing, the 42 companies, the benefits do not come anywhere near this amount. Mm. We've also shown that they granted a number of entities 
the, 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 the incentive without even parliamentary approval. Mm -hmm. Of course, we say it's illegal, it's unconstitutional, but they still did it. Can the same be done today? What I'm saying is that why would they turn around and say that even the conditions under which we are granted are much more stricter? If you look at it, they are regulated. We've passed a law to regulate, mm -hmm. all right? Apart from that, we are not saying that these investors should not pay the, uh, tax on their dividend for 20 years. They did. So if you look at it, if you compare, their uh, regime. tax waiver regime was even more relaxed than ours. I repeat, they were given corporate income, income tax was exempt for 10 years. We are not giving 10 year exemption. Okay. W w they were saying 15% mm -hmm. tax reduction for another 10 years and then no payment of tax on dividends. Are we saying that? All right. So, so it's, 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 it's mere politics, right, which so, is unacceptable. So Alexander, for your is the majority there, we'll take a short, but when we come back, the question is, can, can, as a developing country like that, can we do without the granting of tax waivers to people we are courting them to come and invest in our country? And how much of scrutiny must we employ so that this does not end in the wrong pockets. When we come back, we'll deal with this matter, plus other issues that are likely to come up in Parliament when they resume on the 10th of June. Stay right there. Right, so welcome back to the polls here on Join. It's, it's Friday, so uh, we, we still have the Majority Leader, Alexander Fenyamaki, in the studio. We're going to wrap up with him on some few other issues. I asked earlier whether as a country we can do without tax waivers we grant uh, investors that come to this country to work. Is it even possible that we'll get to a state where we'll say that no more 100% uh, full recovery without any tax waiver? Are we not there yet? Or we still have more, 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 more years to, to get to that stage? And so this thing cannot be taken off the table as of now. <laughs> even in mighty America, mm -hmm. such incentives exist to help the private sector. If you go to Qatar, they have a very attractive tax incentive regime mm -hmm. that allows for investors to get into their country. Dubai, today all of us are rushing to Dubai because of what? They yeah. have created a space that attracts investors, that attracts tourism. So they said that they are that even granting residence right. So, right. for people who want right. to come and invest. So, you see, when you grant the incentive, it doesn't mean you are losing your revenue. Mm -hmm. You get back the revenue in another way. So let me explain. So instead of letting the person pay directly, the person can make an indirect payment. Okay. Where if he employs more, more people are paying PAYE. They are also having other investments in there because they're able to save their income mm -hmm. and are able to uh, invest their income. Government will benefit from it, okay? Mm -hmm. When the economy is thriving, the product that they are selling, right. if they are able to produce more, you are able to tax the, 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 their, their products. Right. The market is able to attract a lot more increased value chain. And the entire value chain, government will benefit something from it. Mm -hmm. So it's an indirect way of opening up your economy. Mm -hmm. But if you say tax, 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 the person will be scared of from day one. Okay, I will not come at all. Already, Ghana is reputed to be one of the most, one of the most tax business environment in the world. Okay, so I think our colleagues should look at it. You see, in other advanced democracies, there are some untouchables. There are issues that the political elites come together and agree that, look, this is a purely national issue. I don't understand why the NDC, we supported them. Look, when they came to parliament on the port thing, first of all was the policy. Mm -hmm. We supported the policy. The facility agreement, we as a committee supported it at the plenary. It was by consensus, because the understanding was that our port situation was not up to international standard. 
and there was a need to expand the port and make it an attractive destination for the shippers, the importers, the exporters, the traders. And we understood that to being that if we do that, it would help economic growth. A serious country would have, you know, a modern port. Mm -hmm. And that is what we understood that to mean. Right. And when they came back again and said, look, this company that is bringing in over $1.5 billion, let's also support them so that they expand. We support it. Why would you turn around? I want to ask Dr. Fawcett, the minority leader, what has changed? I want to ask him that Dr. Atu Fawcett, what has changed? Because during the NDC era, because he was an MP, he was doing the parliamentary liaison. Although Sir Tekpe, the finance minister himself, was coming to parliament a few times. A lot of the time, it was the minority leader who was uh, 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 leading the charge. Yet he is the loudest on this tax waiver. If you listen to his debates, he is in charge of the yen tier, yen tier. Well, he's the leader and he is yes, communicating so, but, the aspiration of his people. But he, 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 he is not a perpetual opposition leader. He's been in government before. You think the Hank Parliament has played a role in, the, in all of this? Well, the Hank, Hank Parliament should benefit Ghanaians as it is. They are using the Hank Parliament to destroy businesses. And that is not right. I expect Dr. Tufosin, who has been in government before, under whose watch we saw this unprecedented tax waiver to a single company to say that, look, I support government's initiative. It will create jobs. How many, how many factories do we have in the central region, including its constituency, my constituency? Mm -hmm. The poverty levels in central region are very high. Mm. The poverty levels across the country all politicians talk about use unemployment to ride high for power. Right. So if we are creating the space for people to get, em get employment, why stampede? Why frustrate? And or they, to them, if they frustrate us, that is when the, there will be agitation for them to win power. Is it all about power? And, and when you get it, mm -hmm. would it change suddenly? Overnight, are you going to change the fortunes of Ghana? You see, this is the same group of people who fought against the, one, uh, the free SHS. The same people mm -hmm. who said free SHS was impossible. Who today still find a way to attack the free SHS. Yet, in their time, they said it was not... In their time, they said it was not possible to implement free SHS. Go to our coast, the Landing Beach Project. You remember? You were a parliamentary mm -hmm. correspondent. NDC came with a facility to start the construction of landing bridge sites for our fisher folks. Yes. Not a single one was done. In fact, they went to the CDB to cap the facility. It was no more a priority. This same NDC would go to the insurer. And by a German, and by a WBRK, oh, what about one year? What about what? And for no, I can catch a fair for the Indian and yet don't But one hybrid went to one year, she am a fair for. They did nothing for the fisher folks. Today, NPP is constructed 13 landing besides. Go to Discov. Go to Elmina. Elmina has been completed. My own constituency in Winneba. In the past, whenever we had heavy rainstorms, they are nets, Adbo motors, uh, canoes. Mm. They were losing everything. Today, they are getting their peace of mind. Finally, 13, on this, mm -hmm. 13 mm. coastal communities are benefiting from, from the this. coastal uh, 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 the landing beach. Yeah, so finally, Meanwhile, they said mm -hmm. we couldn't do it. Finally, on the way, but I'm guessing that as a as, as leader of the house, you are under pressure to deliver this. You, no. You expect that this can go to we June. Have to. We have At to. At all costs, you have to get we this, have to. this pass. We have to. Some of the companies, are we they Ghanaians or, 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 or all of them? These are, are Ghanaian registered entities. Okay. These are Ghanaian registered entities. We need to support them. They are operating in Ghana. The operations are in Ghana. We need to support them. Just as like we supported them to, to give uh, incentive to the private sector during their time. If they are, we are, not, if they are not granted Jata Cement the opportunity to get waiver on their equipment and raw materials, where would Jata Cement be? Jata Cement took a facility, all right, mm. to start this factory at a cost. 
If they had not gotten tax incentive, where do you think the tax settlement would have been there? Gasem. Gasem of all. Gasem has been an old company. Mm. But yet, so Gasem felt that because of its expansion, it needed some uh, exemption from government. And mm. it got it to enable it to survive. Ecobank. Multinational bank. It's a huge bank. We know the role of Ecobank in our economy. Because there was a need to give them that opportunity for whatever expansion drive they had at the time, government granted it. I'm saying that for good reasons, mm. the NDC saw the need to support the private sector. Why the change of mind? Well, I In guess, any event, mm -hmm. now that they are even campaigning, are they not the ones who are talking about a certain 24-hour economy? Is the 24-hour economy going to be hanged on punitive taxation? Is that what they are talking about? Well, I guess only time will tell whether the NDC will back down on their stance against the tax waivers. Only time will tell. 10th June, Parliament will be back in the 11. House. 11th June, Parliament will be back in the House. And one of the things that uh, the, the, the leader of government members will put before them will be for the consideration of this. But away from this, before I let you go, you're a very busy man. I mean, this week, your, your, your Attorney General has been in the news for some other reasons, rather than his work as an Attorney General. The NDC played a recorded conversation allegedly between him and Richard Japa, the third accused in the ambulance trial. And I, and I guess you've had time to go through the issues for and against. As you are a lawyer yourself, I mean, how, what is your reaction to what is happening in this space? The, the Attorney General, your colleague on the other side, at Force, who is facing uh, you know, charges of causing financial loss to the state, and then the development that appear to cast doubt on the integrity of the AG's office? First of all, I believe that the parties have resorted to the court system mm -hmm. for, to litigate. So let's leave it there. Mm -hmm. But on the flip side of it, Alton, um, as a country, we should not encourage certain things that people would secretly be recording people you know, when it comes to this tape recording, you know my own experience. Of course. You know, where my, what somebody I call my best friend. In fact, the, the person who did that, who blackmailed me with that, was someone that I named my firstborn, mm -hmm. my first son. After. After. You know? So, for me, generally, it affects relationship. Before somebody, and I'm being hypothetical. Mm -hmm not related to this matter before somebody would trust you to confide in you on certain matters you know it would mean a lot and in this governance although we are doing ndc mpp cpp Alton, you have been in the space for a long time mm. you know that sometimes you need to cross the okay. aisle mm. uh, you know judges bishops imams Chiefs, there are things that are discussed, all right? Mm -hmm. In the dead of night, for the peace of the country, if you are a national security minister, if you are an interior minister, you are president, you know, a chief may reach out mm -hmm. on matters of national importance and in good faith, you may react in a certain way or you may even act in a manner that you may not necessarily mean it you may be making a statement of convenience and blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. If at the end of the day, all things that are said in private are thrown out in the public, wouldn't there be, quote, unquote, some uh, uh, chaos. chaos and all that? So let's be careful as a nation. Um, Sometimes we may think that it's convenient to do a particular thing. But in the long term, we may realize that it, may, it was really not beneficial. Let me end on this. You mm. recall that when the NDC took EC to court about the 2020 election petition, in open court, the accusation was that uh, EC had rigged the election in favor of President Akufa, mm. correct? Right. But soon thereafter, when uh, Mr. Asiedun Katia and Dr. Fusan Pofo were contested, mm -hmm. In one of the meetings that uh, 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 the NDC 
guys themselves recorded uh, Asi Dunketia. He spoke about the fact that they did not even have their pink sheet. They didn't have their record. Mm. And if they had shown the record they had, they would have been embarrassed. Right. And that their senior counsel advised them that if they don't bring their records, he would not represent them in court. Mm. This is what Dr. Mr. Sedun Katia said in private. Right. I was one of the few people who criticized the recording. That why tape somebody and come and play it in public to embarrass him? Mm -hmm. Do you get what I mean? Mm -hmm. If we continue to encourage people recording people privately, somebody should record and embarrass him. Today it is you. It is somebody, so you are happy to But play. ethically, is the AG's conduct no, right? No, 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 I'm not talking about AG. I'm saying I'm being hypothetical. Mm -hmm. I am being hypothetical. Mm -hmm. And in so doing, I have cited how I experienced a good brother coming to me at 5 a.m., a normal visit. And my wife had cooked for us breakfast, and we talking, and apparently he had a tape on him, and later got doctored and sold me out and created a certain image of me, which was not me. Right. I'm saying that as a, as, as a public officer, I've experienced that bitter situation. So I know what it is. Mm -hmm. You get my point? Mm -hmm. As a country, should we encourage situations like this generally? I can't go into the, the, the AG Jakpa issue. Mm. It's in court. So the judge has cautioned that we should all be circumspect. The, the, the ethical aspect is not in court. No, you cannot talk about ethics here. Mm -hmm. if, you are, if, if I get into that, then it means that I'm passing some judgment. I'm saying that I don't want to go into mm -hmm. it. But I would want to make, continue to make a general statement that today it suits me. Mm -hmm. So I say yes. But tomorrow, it could be somebody else. And what would I say? So let's be careful. I'm not too happy with situations where people will say, I recorded you. Very soon, people will now start showing CCTV footage of friends who have visited and people who have done this and all that. You get my point? Mm -hmm. And then somebody will say, hey, because when things happen like that, people are on their guard. So let us be careful as a country. In this political space, and it's for, are we the political elite, the extremists amongst us? If we are not careful, we will be overthrown. We, the political elite, mm -hmm. the extremism that we exhibit, mm -hmm. if we are not careful, we will destroy ourselves and the masses. And the, the apolitical will say, oh, these people, we can't be, they mm -hmm. can't be trusted. Let's clear them and a new... Uh, 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 Political elites should, come up. Should, 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 should emerge mm. and should evolve. We don't need that. There are steps, there are boundaries, there are red lines we should know. And that is why some of us, we believe that there must be moderation. Do the politics, don't attack personality. That is why in all the submissions, I, I said, look, I will not go into Jata Semen because it is Ibrahim Mahama. All right? So I come and sit here an attack. No. It's an entity. Who owns it does not matter. Mm. What matters is a Ghanaian doing business and employing people who has benefited in a tax incentive alongside others. Mm. Ecobank is safe. But when you personalize, you do that attack, then you are going to the extreme. And that is what some people are doing. Get somebody, they say this week is somebody's turn, who attack this person. Fabricate all manner of things set up media attack on the person, it will help our democracy. But, 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 but again, just, just finally, is, Atu is in court for this ambulance matter. Now, the claim out there is also that perhaps mm -hmm. government was not happy with the way he was taking, taking them on on the economic front, the reason why, at all costs, he has no, to be jailed. So, so these are all speculations. These are all speculations, aren't they? But you also remember... Harun Idrisu was very loud on government. Mm. Harun Idrisu never spared government, did he? No. Yet I remember that President Akufado said that, look, they have committed a wrong. Those the uh, double salary two, issue. The double salary issue. He gave them an opportunity to pay back. Many of the extremists in the MPP said, no, they should be prosecuted. That was a straightforward case. That was a straightforward mm -hmm. case. I don't want to mention it. But a lot of the leading NDC MPs who were ministers, 
were caught in that web. Akufuadu said no. Why prosecute that large number of political class? No, it's not right. In any serious democracy, look at certain consideration. So what would be the gain if Aaron Idrisu, Ama Kofibwa, Ama Mayarga, and all others were thrown into jail? It was a straightforward case. Right. You've been paid double. You've taken it. We could have read dishonesty in it. We could have read fraud. But the government said no. So I don't want anybody to create the impression that this government is out there to attack its opponents. Let's, perhaps, eh, perhaps, if the extremists allow space, there could be backroom engagement. Mm. There could be discussions to look at the substance and deal with it and then forget about the trivialities. But some of these extremists will not give space for moderates to engage for a solution. I'm sure if somebody said financial loss to the state, all right, mm -hmm. we have a new, uh, a new law on uh, uh, plea bargaining. Mm which allows you not to even plead guilty, which allows you mm -hmm. not to even plead guilty, but perhaps re, uh, find a way to pay, pay back, back the money. refund to the mm. state. These are all explored. But, but in this case, the AG has rejected No, no, I'm this. not talking about okay. that. Okay. I'm, make, I'm, I'm doing, making a general statement. Mm -hmm. Don't get me into the AG thing. Okay. You've thrown out a general thing, mm. and I'm also coming out with a general thing, all right? Mm. We should know how to treat each other at the political space. We should know how to go about issues of national interest and not get personal. Mm. And both sides must demonstrate good faith. Some of our friends in the NDC, with the greatest respect, I'm not happy with some of the things that they do. Okay, But I watch and I keep quiet. Because in one breath, one would you know, extend a hand. Mm. Then when you get the opportunity, you tie the person's hand, expose, embarrass the person. You don't do that. Mm. You get it. But, you, you don't do that. But I, I was wondering whether you don't do that. whether this 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 ongoing issue has not really affected. Don't let us get the into front bench. No, the, the front bench. Don't let department. us get into the mm -hmm. ongoing issue. I mean, I think the relationship that, at the front no, bench no, has not really affected. We've been it. working together. Mm -hmm. Me, my experience as a majority leader has been that any time our colleagues are in opposition, they so they say so. Mm. I mean that oh look, Kwamena, this one we can't support you. Prepare yourself. This one will support you. And I'm happy with that. When I assumed office, the first thing I told the minority leader is that, leader, we are going to work together. First of all, we can only be effective if we have a good relationship. Right. But that relationship must be guided by principles. Your principle to protect your party's interests, my principle to protect the interests of my government. So, no surprises. And that's what I told that to and his team. That don't surprise me. If you have this under your sleeve, show it. Full disclosure. Full disclosure. Let me understand where you stand so that I also be armed. Then we do the yep. politics. All right? Mm. So I think it's so far so good. Um, if they say this is their party position, you can't do anything about it. You have to accept it. Mm. And I don't have a problem with somebody saying this is his party position. We've been in opposition before. Sir Tekwe, when he was finance minister, reached out to us on the finance committee a lot of times. We had a very good relationship with Sir Tekwe. In fact, I've not seen a person of his nature. Mm. Sir Tekwe had a very good human relation. All right? Mm. He would reach out to you, but we would tell him boldly that, Minister, this one, we disagree with you. We would oppose you on the floor. But for this one, we support you. And that was it. No bad feelings. No ill will. Mm. And I'm sure the same thing was what uh, Ken Uforiata did when he was finance minister. Right. Reaching out to them, engaging. But at a point, some of our friends went to the extreme, attacking his personality. Right. You know, you're, you're, we oh. all know what happened to Ken Uforiata. Of course. The of attack course. on his personality. All right? So, was, so, it, was it necessary? Mm, before, it wasn't. Yes. Before, so I mean, we, we, we need to be guided. Mm how we move to the extreme on some of these things, you can still do your politics without attacking persons. Of course. Uh, uh, we'll be done, but somebody has been pestering me to ask this question, of course, Thomas Kahn. He says that when the new increment in dialysis came, a parliament had a bite in and there were some, some referrals. We want to find out whether... I think the health, whether health, we the are health doing committee, something about it. I think the health committee 
is is work, working working on it. There was a referral to them, mm -hmm. so I'm sure when we resume, they, they will bring their report. Uh, Honorable Akando is a ranking, and then Honorable Doctor Ayu Efriye is a chair. They 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 get along. Those two mm -hmm. leaders they sure. get along mm -hmm. on 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 matters that get to them. So I'm sure they will, they will, they will get they will, they will bring their report, and then we'll deal with it. All right. Alexander Femaken is the majority leader in Ghana's parliament and, of course, member of parliament for Efutu in the central region. And he's been my guest on the polls. Now, the Bono is regional director of the Electoral uh, Commission, Dr. Gabriel Deyebua, has lauded the use of the challenge forms by the various political parties during the just ended limited voter registration exercise. He says a total of 592 challenge cases representing 2.2%. Of the total number of new registration used during the exercise largely contributed to the low number of conflicts among political actors. Correspondent Anna Sabit has more in this report. The limited voter registration exercise, which started on Tuesday, May 7, across all 268 districts in the country, ended successfully on the 29th of May this year. The exercise, according to the Bruno East Regional Director of the Electoral Commission, Dr. Gabriel Deyabua, has been largely smooth despite the initial technical challenges that marked the exercise on the first and second days. Generally, I would say that the exercise has been very successful throughout the 23 days. When I say successful, we can look at it from three angles. We can say success in terms of operational efficiency, success in terms of patronage, and success in terms of environment, the cooperation. And then the performance of our offices. When you put the three together, you will get what I refer to as operational efficiency, which of course, mm. or I can say excellent. In terms of turnout, the Bunuis region recorded nearly 30,000 new registrants with about 592 challenge cases. Dr. Gabriel Deyebwa says the hike in the number of challenge cases, though high, represents both positive and negative phenomenon as the move has reduced the number of conflicts at the registration centers. This year we had <clears throat> 29,900 and something. The difference here is in connection with the challenge cases. For last year that we had 40,000, we had just 229 challenge cases, which was about 0.75%. But this year, we had 592, which constitute about 2.2%. <clears throat> so it means that the challenge cases has gone up. And that is both positive and negative, I mean, phenomenon. Because we say negative, Negative in the sense that some will say that maybe people who are not qualified attempted to register. That's why we had so many challenges. But from a positive point of view, we will say that it's a good sign, which means that people are now using the challenge facility, which is in accordance with the law, rather than fighting among themselves or physically trying to draw people away from the queue. Dr. Gabriel Deyeboa was, however, quick to note that despite the smooth nature of the excess across the region, there were, however, few skirmishes in other parts of the region, particularly in Kwanzaa South constituency, where there were allegations of some exchanges between the NDC and NPP outside the EC premises. But the, the few skirmishes we had were in Kwanzaa South, and even those ones, they, they didn't relate to the office is i mean of the work itself but uh, it was a tension between mpp and dc outside the office yeah so in terms of my officer day you can see that or you can see that she did so well that she didn't have any issue with any parties. the ec is however confident that with enough education the 2024 general elections will be as peaceful as ever the first strategy is education public education the second right so now let's move to something that i've been waiting for now are you ready for the biggest soccer fan event of the year the hit fm rep your jesse event loved by soccer enthusiasts everywhere is back for it 13th edition tomorrow june 1 at the aviation social center will be buzzing with the energy starting at 10 a.m 
There will be snooker, basketball, video games, and a lot more for everyone. Plus, lots of prizes are waiting to be won. And, uh, and we're going to have uh, Michael Quay in the studio to talk about it. But what are we to expect tomorrow? Uh, we've done this 13 times. There's going to be a, a five-a-side tournament. Uh, that's something that most people look forward to. Uh, between, it's like a tournament between the, the stars or the celebrities on, on Hits FM. Mm -hmm. They have their own teams. They come together, battle it out to find out who wow. uh, gets the bragging rights for this particular season. And we are looking forward to see the likes of Dr. Pounds, Mercury Kwe, and the Dusty. I mean, th these guys are, are the guys who always come on radio, make noise mm -hmm. about their team. That's one event that I I'll, I'll, I'll want our patrons or you listening to me out there to look forward to. That's the Rep Your Jesse Quiz. Uh -huh. Yes, yeah, so the, this is where we okay, so we have this ongoing quiz that we do on radio. Mm. We chose our finalists today on the morning show on Hits, and then uh, they come, we ask them questions like a quiz uh, spearheaded by uh, Nathan Arthur, mm -hmm. and then they ask questions about the Champions League. So it's like a quiz, it's like a three or four round quiz, and it's, 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 it's big. Mm. It's really, really big. People really look forward to that as well. So a lot of things will be happening that day. Uh, there will be vendors there. Who, if you, who, if you want some food, if you want something, people will be filling jerseys there as well. Mm -hmm. You come there, and then you can just purchase a jersey, and then you can join us. So if you don't have a jersey, don't worry. There are jerseys on sale there. You can come there and just buy one for you. All right, so the day is tomorrow, and of course, in the studio with me is Mercury Quay. Turn up, turn up, turn up, turn up, turn up, turn up. Turn up, turn up, turn up. <laughs> good to see you. Yeah, good to see you yes. too. So what's happening tomorrow? I mean, the Hippopoto Monstro Seski mm -hmm. Pedalophobia, uh -huh. you know, uh, spirits of the Hit FM Rapper Jersey Ring. <laughs> and um, tomorrow is a big day. Sure. I mean, there's a lot of euphoria, there's a lot of excitement. Mm -hmm. The calls we are getting, the emails we are receiving from across the world. Mm -hmm. um, I think for a moment I thought the the match was actually going to be played at the Aviation Social Center yeah, tomorrow. Of, yeah, tomorrow. <laughs> the finals itself. The finals itself. <laughs> but we're only going to watch it on the screen. But okay. it's not just a screen. We are watching it on a huge screen, and not just that. The activities that will actually uh, be a prelude to the big event that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, over the years, we have ameliorated the experience. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's been from one level to the other, and it looks like this is the peak of it, 13 mm -hmm. years of this. And this is going to be the 15th time that possibly, mm -hmm. you know, Madrid gets to, you know, lift the cup. Lead so final, it is yeah. a very, uh, you know, interesting, mm -hmm. you know, dynamics yeah. playing out here. Yeah, so, I mean, it's great. I mean, I, I am a Liverpool fan. Wow. It's unfortunate that we are not playing the finals. <laughs> but who are you throwing your support? I'll, I'll go for Dortmund. Okay, okay. And I think Real Madrid, the domination <laughs> is just well. too much. Okay. The domination is too I much. I get it. I get it's it. simply just too much. Right. I, 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 and you see the interesting thing. Mm. You know, Jude Bellingham. Yes. Uh, Real Madrid bought him from Dortmund. Mm. Now, per the agreement, yes. if Real Madrid is able to win the Champions mm. League, they will pay Dortmund a bonus of 25 million euros. Right. Now, winning the Champions League trophy, UEFA will give the winner 20 million. 20 million. So if Real Madrid wins, they will pay more. More, yes. So <laughs> they will pay you, more. you don't want them to pay. <laughs> so I, don't, I, I don't know the, how, how, how they're going to approach this. Right, right. You win the trophy, you pay 25 million euros to Dortmund. Yes. If you don't win, you keep your 20 million euros. So. <laughs> You think it would be a better idea to not to win, <laughs> so that you don't pay the bonus, <laughs> so that you don't pay the bonus. Right. But so 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 tell me about the lineup of activities. I mean, starting uh, from 10 a.m. tomorrow. Just as we've had, and uh, this will be for those who are going to experience this for the first time. Um, from 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. the activities start. We have a lot of vendors who've got great food. Um, there's uh, citizens jerseys who, who right, actually right. gave me this right party. in front of the, the right, multimedia exactly, and building. You can, you can just grab one. Yeah, so even ahead of tomorrow, if you close from work today, you could actually pass by Joy FM, Joy News, and um, pick up your jersey, mm -hmm. a, a beautiful one like this. So 10 a.m. it gets to start. We have activities including the five aside football mm -hmm. game. I mean. I have won, my team, the Turn Up FC, have won that cup a couple of times. So this time we want to leave it for the likes of DJ Black of and the rest to, mm. you know, uh, get their shine. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, there'll be live commentary, mm. you know, by the guys from Joy uh, yeah. Sports. Uh, and my favorite part mm -hmm. will be when eventually the cup is lifted mm -hmm. and we get to have the after party. That's right. Which is hosted by myself. That's right. That's general. right. I, got, you know, I can't wait for that. You know, I can't wait for the mixes and all yes, those things. Yes, and all that. Mm -hmm. Yes. So uh, basically, this was going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, very, very exciting. There's no other place to be tomorrow mm -hmm. than the aviation social. And all day from 10 a.m. 
all till, the way till, till the next morning. They, they say till Mama calls. <laughs> till Mama calls. <laughs> yes. and, 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 and we've got people who are supporting this, this great event. Yes, we've got some amazing uh, sponsors, partners. Um, they've been amazing. And we want to say a big, big thank you to all the uh, partners. A big thank you to Suckerbet. They mm. are supporting us. A big thank you to Jamar Detergent, Franco Trading Enterprise, Silver Star Auto, um, Syntex Tank. If you're thinking mm -hmm. time to store your water, you know, they, they have you covered. Ice Drop, Mineral Water. We have Shell Talks, Citizen Sports, as I mentioned, and Heineken. Yes, they are refreshing us. So and it's I, a very, very... Again, the venue, the Aviation Social Aviation Center. Aviation Social Center. Time is starting at 10. 10, yes. And then there will be a lot, to, a lot to eat and drink. Just come have fun. Come with the entire family because we have everything for everybody. Absolutely. And one important thing, there might be that friend you have actually been searching of for. Of course. They will be you at will find him there. tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> you got it. All right, Merky, thank you so much for coming. I will see you tomorrow. I can't wait to see you tomorrow. I will be there. In All fact, right. I'm, I'm, I'm joining the... This guy said on radio that there are certain players that don't want to see in his team. So you are joining? <laughs> they, will, they will contribute nothing. <laughs> I'll come and support with, with other things. Right. All right. right. All right, folks. So, 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 so that's our show. Tomorrow, the venue is the Aviation Social Center. It's a hit FM rep, your Jesse. I want to see you there. Let's, let's meet there. Let's have fun. Let's watch football and let's connect. Until then, you have a good weekend. Whatever you are up to in the hours ahead, I hope it's profitable. My name is Elton Robbie. Have a good weekend and take care.